Write us a 100 word story about Christmas. Roxana paced the room restlessly. It was a wonderful evening before Christmas, but the heart sunk in anticipation of trouble. Frank, her husband, still hasn't returned home and hasn't answered the phone. She knew something had happened. It's all because of his work. The house stopped at the house. Roxana clutched her heart and immediately ran out into the street. The driver shook his head mournfully and opened the back door of the car. The woman saw her husband's legs and came closer. It happened. Bastard! You said you wouldn't be drinking at corporate party at your ritual agency. Come on! Frank stretched out of the hearse and waved to the driver. Thanks for the ride, man. The city was getting ready for Christmas. An elementary school teacher, Mr. Babinski, ran into a neighbor by chance. Happy holidays, the neighbor smiled. And why are you without a Christmas tree and purchase? Um, I decided this year not to spend money on this consumer hype artificially created by capitalists, the teacher replied. There is nothing better than a handmade gift. Fair enough, maybe I'll cut costs too. Night. Snowfall. Two men in rain gods met in the gateway. I am from the Easter Bunny, the fat man said softly, holding out a photograph of Mr. Babinski. This needs to be removed. Santa Claus took out cash from a red bag and handed it to the mercenary. I didn't run a gift business for centuries to get some asshole to screw it up. It was an evening. Snowed. The Grubel family was walking through the cemetery. Mom, I don't want to visit my grandparents. The guys are already laughing because we come to them every year, Joey said capriciously. Darling, it's true. Maybe this year we will not go to your parents. It's a strange tradition, don't you think? said the head of the family. Don't be ridiculous. Christmas should be spent with family, and it doesn't matter if someone died a long time ago. The elderly couple sat down for a festive dinner. Martha sighed sadly and looked at the photograph of her daughter. A few years ago, she died with her family in a car accident. But the old people were ready to swear that every Christmas they felt their presence. It's boring here and in the afterlife is a party! Joyce ghost pouted as soon as they passed through the door of the old people's house. Let's go back to the cemetery! The kids from 37th Street wandered around sadly, until suddenly the Christmas miracle began to happen. For the first time in many years, it snowed in their region. Huge white flakes swirled in the air and spread under their feet, children laughing loudly, making snow angels. And then they all built a snowman together. He magically came to life and began to give gifts to children. And soon Santa Claus arrived and he offered children a ride on his flying deers. Adults quickly joined this holiday. No one remembered that there were six months left before Christmas. Besides, no one knew that the underground laboratory had exploded on a neighborhood street and the whole area was covered with the wrong snow. The kids continued to joyfully jump around the tramp and pull his gray beard. I woke up in a cozy house. Wood crackled pleasantly in a fireplace. Decorations screamed that Christmas is approaching. I went outside and looked around. Lord, how beautiful! Suddenly, the earth shook and an infernal earthquake began. A blizzard has risen. When everything calmed down, I tried to get out to the people, but couldn't run far. My fake ideal house was covered with a glass dome. What the hell? I'm trapped! Suddenly, a gigantic child appeared in front of my nose behind the glass. He grabbed my little world and shook it violently. The snow swirled in the air and I hit the glass hard. And I remembered that I live in a fucking snow globe that stands on the mantel place. Yeah, try to remember this if you keep banging your head every time. Bum, 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 bum. 
A grey bearded old man in red clothes was sitting in the police station. Petrol stopped him in the park. He molested children, Officer White said. I just gave them gifts, put in the old man. An ordinary tramp who got hold of a costume somewhere. Waste of time to mess with him. Can we let him go? White asked his partner. No. Everything must be done according to the protocol, angrily replied Officer Black. Go make some coffee and I'll fill in the papers. Well, as you wish, White threw and left. Officer Black leaned towards the old man. You can't fool them, but you won't fool me, you bastard. Remember me? He hissed in the face of Santa Claus. Martin, well, it's not my fault that your letter was lost. I was only six and I was waiting for the railway toy, but now you will answer me for this. I'll put you in the cell with the blue elves for the night. They'll clean your chimney. The parents were already asleep and Jimmy was sitting in the living room with bothered breath. Finally, a large ass in the red pants emerged from the fireplace. Santa Claus, Jimmy whispered. Ho ho ho, who is a good kid this year, Santa said in an expectedly high voice. And why are you a woman, surprised Jimmy. Not a woman, but a non-binary Santa Claus and besides black. Renovation in the light of modern trends, Santa grumbled displeasedly. But Dad said, Jimmy drawled, biting off the gingerbread. Don't eat that gluten, non-vegan, non-kosher crab. Santa was indignant. So, here's your gift. I do not have time. Santa handed the boy a rainbow flag and disappeared into the fireplace. I won't be a good boy next year, thought Jimmy, tossing the flag into the fireplace and going to bed. He got ready for Christmas, decorated the house, hung socks above the fireplace. It's not too late to write a letter, he thought, and sat down at the table. Dear Santa Claus, a noise from the fireplace interrupted him. He stood up and cautiously walked closer. Suddenly something fell from above, sparks flew. A leg fell out of the fireplace, then the second one, then hands and everything else. He stood and watched in horror as the boy parts came together. A moment later, a boy stood in front of him. Uncle, here I am with you, the boy named Stonehead shouted cheerfully. We will celebrate together. Many a combowlment painfully clutched his hand and sat on the floor. Dear Santa Claus, this year I was not a very good boy, but save me at least from this stupid child. Wake up or you'll be late for work. What? But it's only four in the morning. You know how traffic jams are on holidays. I hate fucking Christmas. Why the hell do I have to work? When the pension is, how tired I am. Dear, but we have to feed the children. Yes, yes, I'm getting up. He grumbled as he ate breakfast and got ready for work. He kissed his wife and left. Came back 14 hours later. Well, how was the shift, our breadwinner? The wife asked kindly. How, how, it sucks. First the children and then the drunken adults almost tore me apart. Santa Claus wearily threw off his cap. That's it. Wife, let me rest for 364 days now. I'm not a robot for you to work this hard. A police squad drove up to the Mrs. Patterson's house. She was just making a snow one with her grandson. It was Christmas Eve. Sergeant Fisher looked at the old woman grimly. Ma'am, can we talk in private? The woman sent her grandson to the house and with bated breath approached the policeman. Does he want to say something bad? I asked everyone in the pub. Mr. Patterson finished drinking around midnight and went straight home, but he disappeared without a trace somewhere along the way. So far, nothing new has been found, but I hope he will be home by Christmas. Sergeant Fisher said goodbye to the old woman and got into the car. Mrs. Patterson chuckled wickedly. 
You won't find this drunkard until spring anyway. She took a handful of snow and put it on the fallen part of the snowman where Eddie's hand was showing through. And then I'll figure out where to put the body. Let us know which story you liked the most in the comments down below. And also send us new themes for 100 word stories. Don't forget to subscribe and click the thumb button.